say good morning, good hope. Good morning. There was a song that said, there's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Now you sitting in this house, if you know anything about the name of Jesus, Sometimes we ought to show some signs. You in this house, he allowed us to gather today in this great place to lift up his name, to shed off all the troubles and the fears, and just say thank you, Lord. Some of us had to climb a few little hills and mountains to get here, had to shake off a few things, but now that you're here and you can feel his presence, now you can if you count on your neighbor to show it. But if you count it in you, it's time to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For this first Sunday in May. Yeah. It wasn't automatic. Everybody ain't here. But you're here, whether you're at home watching or in the sanctuary. God deserves the praise. We came to fellowship and to lift up his name. That's a that's an easy little thing. Lift up his name, because most of us had a little bite to eat this morning, and we had clothes to put on. Lord knows we ought to feel comfortable in his place. Let us continue with our choir as they bring us sweet music. You are 
in your house of prayer. And Father, we thank you for it right now. Realize, our Father, we got to thank you for, for grace and mercy. Lord, had it not been for grace and mercy. Oh, oh, our Father. We, 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 don't understand, we, we don't know where we would be right now. But through your grace, there's always good. Grace is always there for us. And our Father, we thank you for it. You know, oh, 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 our Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a merciful God. Looking beyond all of our faults and our pitfalls. And Lord, to bless us in spite of and not because of. And we thank you for it right now. And Heavenly Father, as we assemble here in your house of prayer this morning. Oh, Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to come into your tabernacle and praise your name. And oh, Heavenly Father, we pray that thou will bless each and every soul that's bowed down under the sound of my voice. You know, our Father, more about us than we know about ourselves. You know our needs. You know our desires. You know our accomplishments. You know where we'll be tomorrow. Oh, our Heavenly Father, you know and you know. And oh, Lord, we pray that you will bless us right now. Bless us, Lord, with our coming in. And bless us with our going out. Prop us up where we're leaning. Build us up where we're toned down. But most of all, our Father, Oh, Heavenly Father, keep us committed to your cause. Oh, Heavenly Father, that we love each other and treat each other right. You know, our Father, we pray now for all the sick and the shut in, especially those that are part of this house and this family. Bless all the bereaved, all of those, our Heavenly Father, who trodden upon, who cast out, and oh, our Heavenly Father, mistreated, misused, and abused. Lord, be merciful unto us. Lord, we need you right now in all walks of our lives. Lord, those, those that are in the, in, 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 in the, in the cradle, they need you. The ones who are helping the Father who are in elementary school, they need you. The ones in junior high, the ones in high, they need you. The young adults need you. The seasoned adults need you. The super senior needs you. All of us need you in a special way. We don't need you for one thing. We surely need you for another. And Lord, in this worshiping experience, here a good hope this morning. We pray that I will bless these services for your name's sake. Make them what they ought to be. That you that these, that this worshiping experience will be pleasing in your sight. We pray that I will bless the administrative staff of this church. Bless all pastors. Bless all, all parts of the administration staff. Lord, bless us in a special way. You know, our Father, we pray that you will continue to hold your hand of grace and mercy upon us. Continue, our Heavenly Father, to lead us on and on until it's your time to call and that day comes when we must answer. But, oh, our Father, we pray that God will be so close to us that we can lay, your, lay our heads on your, on your breath and you can receive us in your kingdom. Bless us and keep us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Lord, 
us to break our silence and give God some praise. Amen. For the Bible did say that everything that had breath give the Lord some praise. I didn't say something, but for everything that includes you, me, and everybody under the sound of my voice, that everything that had breath give God some praise. Amen. This might be your last time to praise him. Yeah, and while you have this opportunity, you ought to praise him yeah, from whom all blessings flow. Amen. Amen. The Lord is in this place. And we ought to thank God that he has blessed us to be in the number one more time. Amen. Give God a round of praise. this morning for our praise team rather this morning for blessing us as they always do and it's a blessing on this first Sunday of this month to find ourselves in this Bethel spot I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm having a great day. What about you? I say, I'm having a great day. No matter what is happening, I'm having a great day. Amen. I shared yesterday that particular message that I prayer visual, and certainly those who were there know how they ought to behave today. And in case you were not here, I want to tell you how you need to behave today. You need to rejoice. Amen. And you need to be glad in it. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. To our senior pastor, Dr. Hatton, and to Reverend White, Reverend Anderson, and to each of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank God for the Sunday school lesson this morning. Speaking truth to power. And whenever we tell folk the truth, even though they may not like it, we still have to tell them what God says. You can't get mad and upset with the messenger. You have to take that up with the one who sent the messenger. And I don't believe none of our fists are big enough to box with God. And you'll be a fool if you tried. Somebody say amen. amen. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Verse 13 and 14, and in Psalms 32, verses 1 through 5, and for a background scripture for your own reading is Psalms 51, verses 1 through 15. We're going to read in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, from the NIV translation, verse 13. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. 
Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. But because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord. The son born to you will die. In Psalms 32, verses 1 through 5, it says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sins the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long for day and night. Your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Verse 5. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sins. I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> I want to talk to you this morning from this question, is there something that you need to confess? Is there something that you need to confess? My brothers and my sisters, David had promised God that if God would forgive and restore him back to a right relationship with God, that David, he, would then teach transgressors the Lord's way. In Psalms 51 and verse 13, David makes this promise to God, saying that if God would restore him, back to a right relationship with God that he would then teach transgressors the Lord's way. And my brothers and my sisters, the best person to teach a sinner the Lord's way is one who has been saved from sin. It takes a sinner to know one. And those of us who know that were it not for the grace of God, we wouldn't be no better than the lost man on Skid Row. But I am 
what I am because of God's grace. And David is going to teach us about the forgiveness of God. And one thing I want us to understand is that whenever God has forgiven us, he also restore and clean us up. Brothers and sisters, for those of us who are familiar with David, we will discover in 2 Samuel 12, David has been approached by the prophet Nathan, who called David out as it relates to a sin that David had committed, that he had failed to acknowledge it and get right with God. Between the act of the sin and the confession that David makes, God allowed mercy to come in between. And what I'm saying is there are some things that you and I have going on in our lives that we have not confessed. There are some secret sins that lurks in our hearts and our minds even in our behavior that we have not confessed and sometimes my brothers and sisters when we delay our confessing of our sins we are only doing ourselves a disservice. The Bible teaches us that we ought not to let the sun go down on our wrath. Which means that God wants us, when it comes down to sin, to nip it in the bud. But oftentimes, my brothers and sisters, we delay uh, confessing our sin until somebody calls us out. The Bible teaches us that David had committed a great sin. This sin was a adulterous relationship with a woman by the name of Bathsheba. And David had an affair with Bathsheba and as a result of this affair, Bathsheba became pregnant. And now David has committed a great sin. What makes this sin so heinous is that Bathsheba was already taken. She already had a husband uh, whose name was uh, Mariah. Uh, he, Uriah, his name was Uriah, and he was a faithful servant of David. But yet David cared nothing for this man at all because had David cared for him David would not have meddled with his wife sometime my brothers and sisters 
even those of us who are after God's own heart as David was can find ourselves in a moment of relaxation and uh, letting our guards down we can find ourselves yielding to temptation. Not a person in this building can stick their chest out or hold their head up as though they are above temptation. Every one of us in here is capable of falling. I don't care how long you've been in your church. Don't care how long you've been reading the Bible. I don't care how many times a day you pray. All of us is subject to temptation. And here David finds himself in a state of relaxation, in a state where he lets his guards down. And I want to say to us, uh, you need to be careful with letting your spiritual guards down. When you find yourself not attending church on a regular basis as you once did, it's a sign that you are setting yourself up for temptation. When you find yourself cutting back on your prayer life, that's a sign that you are setting yourself up for temptation. When you find yourself not mingling and co-mingling with other believers in Christ to strengthen your faith as iron sharpens iron, you are setting yourself up for temptation. So it is with David. He has let his guards down and he sees Bathsheba and the temptation sets in. And he takes another man's wife look at that if you will and I know that as we look at this there are some who may be very quick to point the finger very quick to say now look at David the king he ought to be ashamed of himself. Anybody that's a child of God ought to know better. Got a lot of folk in church like that. They can see you fall. And now they got a whole commentary on your life. And they know why. They know the reason. They know everything that led up to your fall. In other words, they know more about your shortcomings than they know about their own. The problem is not that they don't know about their own. The problem is that they are delaying confessing it. It's not an easy thing. To admit when you're wrong. It's not an easy thing to say. It's not my brother or my sister. Uh, that's the cause of the trouble. But it's me. That's not an easy thing to do. Because we are. Afraid of the embarrassment it may bring. We are trying to uphold. Our reputation. Our image. Sad part about it, my brothers and my sisters, is there something 
that you need to confess? Is there something you need to confess to your spouse that you've been hiding from him or her for a long time? Is there something you need to confess to your church that you've been covering up for a long time? Is there something that you would even got so good at hiding you have even hid it from yourself and convinced yourself that everything is all right? David was that kind of person. Long as nobody challenged him long as nobody said nothing about uh, the affair that he had with Bathsheba, uh, it was business as usual. And so often, we as saints, we fail our brothers and our sisters because for some reason, we don't want to call them out. We feel like if we call them out, it's going to make us look like we meddling into their business. It's going to make it look like we're just trying to be nosy. But let me tell you something. God holds us as Christians responsible for calling our brothers and our sisters out. The Bible says, those of us who are spiritual, when you see a brother or a sister that is overtaken in a fault, those who are spiritual ought to go to that brother or that sister in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself. At least you be tempted also. But the problem is, many of us are afraid to do so because we believe the myth and the false teaching that we ought not to judge one another. My brothers and sisters, God did not say that we could not judge. But what God said is that when you judge, the same way you judge others is the same way you're going to be judged. Do I have a witness here? And so we need some folk uh, that's like uh, Micaiah in our Sunday school uh, that's uh, bold enough to call our brother and to call our sister out. They might get mad at you. Might not speak to you for months. But at least you are trying to save a soul from trouble and pain and hardship and even hell. God calls Nathan. And he tells Nathan to go and call David out. Nathan goes to David. And he began to tell David this little parable concerning uh, a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had many lambs. The poor man only had one wee lamb, which represented Bathsheba, the one wife of Uriah. He says to David that there was a traveler that was passing through and Instead of the rich man taking a lamb from his flock to show hospitality to the traveler, he took that one lamb from the poor man. And when David heard that, the Bible says that David was distraught. David was uh, angry. And David said that the man that would do such a thing should be put to death. And that's when my brother and my sisters, Nathan pointed his finger, no doubt, in the face of 
David and declared unto David that thou art the man. But I thank God that Nathan said to David in 2 Samuel 12 and 13, he reminded David that God has put away his sin. Y'all missed that? David confesses to Nathan that he had sinned. But Nathan said to David that God has taken away your sins. So therefore, my brothers and my sisters in Psalms 32, we have David making good on his promise. Because in Psalms 51 and verse 13, he says, in essence, that he would teach transgressors the Lord's way. And he would do that after the Lord had forgiven him and restored him back to a right relationship with God. And because David has been forgiven, he know how blessed that is. I don't know about you, my brother and my sisters, if you've been forgiven, that ought to give you a sense of a uh, blessfulness and that's why David in Psalm 32 verse 1 note if you will he said bless is the one whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sins are covered I don't know about y'all but I'm glad to report to you all today that um, when God has covered your sins, you are blessed. Uh, I say when God has covered your sins, you are blessed. And when God covers our sin, uh, God will no longer hold us accountable for them sins. I'm glad I've been forgiven. I'm glad I've been forgiven by God. And you know what? All of the wrong that I have done, you can condemn me. But I thank God my judge is on high. As long as I got the forgiveness of God, that gives me the sense to know that I am blessed. Anybody here blessed? Anybody here know that God has covered your sins? I know from whence I came. Uh, I know what I used to be like. I know all of that. And when I stand up in the day, I'm going to tell you I'm blessed. And the reason I'm blessed is because my sins have been covered. And one thing about sin when God covers them, God don't go back and fish him up. Do I have a witness here? God don't go back and bring up all the stuff you did 40 years ago. But God wipes the slate clean. Do I have a witness here? Uh, so David goes on and says uh, that God has covered his sin blesses the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them in other words uh, God uh, wiped the slate clean and he can do that because somebody paid the penalty that we could not pay 
Uh, somebody paid the price uh, that we could not pay. Don't y'all know uh, that Jesus uh, paid it all? So blessed is the man, woman, boy, girl, whose sins are covered. But in order for David to uh, be forgiven, it required something. It required that in order for David to be forgiven, he had to confess his sins. Brothers and sisters, I want to say to us that it has been said that uh, if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. David said, my brothers and sisters, uh, he confesses his sins. But his confession only came later. And he did not nip it in the bud. So between the act of sin that was committed and the confession of the sin in order to be forgiven he went through hell and high water listen at him he says when I kept silent when I wouldn't say nothing about it when I would open my mouth and acknowledge my sin when I was trying to keep it on the, the rug David said, my bones waxed away. In other words, it affected his body. It affected his, his physical health. His bones waxed away. He said, through my groaning all day long, for day and night, your hand was heavy on me. David says, my bones uh, were uh, affected. They were wasting away. All day and all night, God's hand was heavy on him. He says, my strength was sapped as in the heat of the summer. And oh, my brothers and sisters, maybe the hell that you are catching is all that's going on between the act of sin that you have committed and your delayed confession. So let me help you here. If the hand of